In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how we conduct a continuity test on a final ring circuit. In previous videos, we've uh, demonstrated the theory behind this, and now I'm going to show the practice. So there are three steps to doing a ring circuit continuity test. The first step is to measure the continuity of the individual conductors. You'll note that I've already removed the conductors from the terminations and the circuit breaker. Um, obviously, before having done that, we've done a safe isolation to prove that the circuit is dead as well. Um, we have our low resistance ohm meter. So the first measurement I shall take are the end-to-end -end measurements for little r1, little r2 and little rm. So I start off with measuring little r1, so we simply clip the test across the ends of the conductors. Bear in mind that we have already um, zeroed or nulled the leads. Very important that we always null the leads prior to a continuity test to remove the resistance from any measurements of the test leads themselves. So I've already nulled the leads. I've now clipped onto the ends of the conductors and this will be the measurement for little r1. So we've selected uh, low resistance on our meter, hit the test button and we can see a reading there of one, uh, 0.51 ohms. Um, we then move to, and we would record that value on the schedule of test results. We then move to little rn, across the blue cables there. Now, being um, a twin in earth, these conductors will be the same size, 2.5 mil. We would expect the reading to be the same. So then we uh, hit the test button again. And again, we can see 0.5. So, we record that value. Then we move on to little r2, over here, clip on there, get a good connection. Now with twin and earth, this is a smaller cable, 1.5, so we'd expect the reading to be higher uh, than the previous two readings. So now if I hit the test button, um, we see we've got approximately 0.9 of an ohm, and we record that figure. Um, once we've got those three readings, we can then move on to step two, which involves us crossing over, in the first instance, little rn and little r1. So I'm, uh, there's various ways and means we can do this. We can use uh, chalk blocks uh, or um, Wago blocks. I'm just going to use the crop clip uh, to cross over the two leads. And so we cross over little r1 with little rn. And then we take a second crop clip and we connect together the other Rn and R1, making sure we've got a good contact there and they're connected together. So now we've got the crossover here at the consumer unit, we're going to have to measure between little R1 and little Rn at the socket outlets. And we're going to move along and test at each socket. And in theory, if these are connected up correctly and the cable is connected to the sockets correctly, we should see a consistent reading, the same reading approximately at each socket. And the reading should be um, the two previous readings that we've taken for little rn, little r1, approximately 0.5. Add those together, that gives us 1 ohm. And the formula says little r1 plus little rn uh, over 4. So 1 over 4, that would give us 0.25 of an ohm. So we're expecting to see approximately 0.25 of an ohm. Bearing in mind that you will see some variance because uh, there will be contact resistance in the switches, contact resistance in the sockets, and contact resistance between the socket and the test meter. But if we get a fairly consistent result around 0.25 of an ohm, we know that that ring circuit is connected correctly. So if I move to the first socket, and again we would normally null the leads and include our socket tester. Um, so we'll assume that we've done that, connecting across little rn, or the neutral end, the line socket. Bear in mind we need to keep the uh, socket switched on, uh, and then we take a, a reading. As we can see, we expected about 0.25 of an ohm, we've got about 0.29. You will get some variance due to, I say, contact resistance and so on. So now we move on to the next socket, and we should see a similar figure. Don't remember to turn the socket on, of course. Um, and again, maybe a bit higher this time, but fairly close. Uh, moving on to the next socket. 
test again. <clears throat> 0.25, which is what we're expecting. Moving on to the final socket. And test again. 0.25. So by getting a consistent reading, um, uh, close to what we expect, we know that that ring circuit is connected up correctly. If the crossovers at this point had been incorrect, or there had been a crossover at the socket, or the wiring had been incorrect, um, then those figures would vary as we move around the circuit. Um, in addition, if there were any open circuits, for example, if I do the test again with the switch off, obviously we'd see a, an infinite reading of resistance. So by doing that test, not only if we check that the ring is connected correctly between R1 and Rn, um, that we've also checked that the polarity is also correct. We then move on to the final step, the third step, where we cross over the R1s with the R2s. So I'll come back to the consumer unit. I'm going to connect up little R2 with our little R1. Let's connect up to R1. <coughs> and then we do the same with the other pair. squeeze uh, and then similarly we move then to the sockets but this time we're measuring between R1 and R2 at each socket so we can go into the socket there bearing in mind what we measured in the first step we had approximately 0.9 for R2 and 0.5 for R1 add those together roughly about uh, 1.4 Divided by 4, looking at around 0.3 of an ohm, 0.3 to 0.4 of an ohm. So let's see what we get. <coughs> uh, in fact, that's quite low. <laughs> uh, we just, it may be I've got the connections here incorrect. So it is a you know, trial and error. Um, so we've got around very low resistance there. Let's just move to another random socket and test again. And as you can see, these are quite uh, low values. Um, so let's just try swapping over these connections to see if that makes any difference. So now I'm going to swap over the other pairs. <clears throat> and the squeeze. And the other pair there. And the squeeze. And uh, we'll try again. So let's start um, here. Hit the test button. So this time we've got about 0.3 of an ohm, which is roughly what we expect. Move along to the next socket. And test again. 0.3 of an ohm, good. So now we know we've got the connections correct at the consumer unit, and obviously then we get 0.3 in each socket. Uh, we've got an open circuit, but again, I forgot to press the, the on switch. Try right, again. We've got 0.3 roughly. And finally, the last socket. 0.3 of an ohm. So that's the third step in the process. And this figure, um, 0.3 approximately, that's what would be recorded on the schedule of test results as big R1 plus big R2. Um, and that completes the test. So we've got our, our three steps. Um, and we've proved that the ring is connected correctly um, at each socket. Uh, once we've completed the test, record the results, we'd reinstate the circuit and re reinstate the cables into the terminals. And that completes the test.